Only, only two participants may yeah. soon come in. Anyway, Prabhupada said, you should actually teach Bhagavatam even to the wall, isn't it? Yeah. The wall so, teaches back. <laughs> we are going deep inside and I hope you are all helping that we can drown in the sea. Like, like diving. <laughs> drown in the sea because the Lord is also jumping in the sea so we can do like him. So we will read chapter 18, Rescuing the Lord from the Sea. As you know, chapter 17 is about a turtle. And we understand that actually this is Radharani's Bhava, the turtle. So now we have to see what actually is chapter 18, what Bhava is this. As we all know, we are searching for a special bath. So let's see if we find it here. So a summary of the 18th chapter is given by Srila Bhaktivinotakur in his Amrita Pravahabhash. On an autumn evening, when the moon was full, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu walked along the seashore near the Aitota temple, mistaking the sea for the Yamuna river. He jumped into it, hoping to see the water pastimes of Krishna and Srimati Radharani and the other gopis. As he floated in the sea, however, he was washed away to the Konarka temple, where a fisherman, thinking that the Lord's body was a big fish, caught him in his net and brought him ashore. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was unconscious and his body had become unusually transformed. As soon as the fisherman touched the Lord's body, he became mad in ecstatic love of Krishna. His own madness frightened him, however, because he thought that he was being haunted by a ghost. As he was about to seek a ghost charmer, he met Swarupdamada Goswami and the other devotees on the beach, who had been looking everywhere for the Lord. After some inquiries, Swarupdamada could understand that the fisherman had caught Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his net. Since the fisherman was afraid of being haunted by a ghost, Swarup Damuda gave him a slap and chanted Hare Krishna, which immediately pacified him. Thereafter, when the devotees chanted the Hare Krishna Mahamantra loudly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to his external consciousness. Then they brought him back to his own residence. So text number one. In the brilliant autumn moonlight, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mistook the sea for the river Yamuna. Greatly afflicted, by separation from Krishna, he ran and dove into the sea and remained unconscious in the water the entire night. In the morning, he was found by his personal devotees. May that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
the son of Mother Sachi, protect us by his transcendental pastimes. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dveta Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dveta Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dveta Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Nityananda Prabhu. All glories to Advaita Acharya. And all glories to all the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 3 Emate Mahaprabhu Nila Chale Vaise Ratri Dine Krishna Vichy Dhanave Bhase. While thus living at Jagannath Puri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu floated all day and night in an ocean of separation from Krishna. During a night of the autumn season, when a full moon brightened everything, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wandered all night long with his devotees. He walked from garden to garden, seeing the pastimes of Lord Krishna and hearing and reciting songs and verses concerning the Rasa Lila. He sang and danced in ecstatic love and sometimes imitated the Rasa dance in emotional ecstasy. He sometimes ran here and there in the madness of ecstasy and sometimes fell and rolled on the ground. Sometimes he became completely unconscious. When he heard Swarov Damura recite a verse concerning the Rasa Lila, or he himself recited one, he would personally explain it as he had previously done. In this way, he explained the meaning of all the verses concerning the Rasa Lila. Sometimes he would be very sad and sometimes very happy. To explain fully all those verses and all the transformations that took place in the Lord's body would require a very large volume. So as not to increase the size of this book, I have not written about all the Lord's pastimes for he performed them every moment of every day for twelve years. As I have previously indicated, I am describing the mad speeches and bodily transformations of the Lord only in brief. If Ananda, with his 1,000 hoods tried to describe even one day's pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would find them impossible to describe fully. If Ganesh, Lord Shiva's son, 
and the expert scribe of the demigods tried for millions of millenniums to fully describe one day of the Lord's pastimes, he would be unable to find their limit. Even Lord Krishna is struck with wonder at seeing the transformations of ecstasy in his devotees. If Krishna himself cannot estimate the limits of such emotions, how could others? Krishna himself cannot fully understand the conditions, the mode of progress, the happiness and unhappiness, and the moods of ecstatic love of his devotees. He therefore accepts the role of a devotee to taste these emotions fully. So now here is the first hint, actually. Till now, the Lilas were mostly in the mood of Aratha, like the turtle. And now in this chapter, something is changing. He therefore accepts the role of a devotee to taste these emotions fully. Fully. To full extent. We know what does that mean, to full extent. Text 18. Ecstatic love of Krishna makes Krishna and his devotees dance. And it also dance personally. In this way all three dance together in one place. Who is ecstatic love of Krishna? In person. So Radharani makes Krishna dance and his devotees dance. And it also dance personally. In this way all three dance together in one place. This is actually the first hint to the Rasa dance. One who wants to describe the transformations of ecstatic love of Krishna is like a dwarf trying to catch the moon in the sky. This is actually how we feel when we try to read and go inside these themes. As the wind can carry away but a drop of the water in the ocean, a living entity can touch only a particle of the ocean of love of Krishna. This is a very nice description. Only one drop of water the wind can carry. Just very little drops of this ocean. But it is said that if one touches only one drop of this ocean of love, of Krishna, this will purify the living entity. Text 21 Endless waves arise moment after moment in that ocean of love. How could an insignificant living entity estimate their limits? Only a person on the level of Swarup Damodha Goswami can fully know what Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tastes in his love for Krishna. When an ordinary living entity describes the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he purifies himself 
by touching one drop of that great ocean. So this is actually exactly the point we try to purify ourselves by touching this drop of that great ocean. Thus all the verses about the Rasa Lila dance were recited. Then finally the verse concerning the pastimes in the water was recited. As an independent leader among elephants enters the water with its female elephants, Krishna, who is transcendental to the Vedic principles of morality, entered the water of the Yamuna with the gopis. His chest had brushed against their breasts, crushing his flower garland and coloring it with red kumkuma powder, attracted by the fragrance of that garland, humming bumblebees followed Krishna like celestial beings of Gandharva Loka. In this way, Lord Krishna mitigated the fatigue of the Rasa dance. So here is the description what actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was relishing when he was in the sea. And he could watch the scene like it is described here. This is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.33.23. While thus wandering near the temple of Aitota, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu suddenly saw the sea. Brightened by the shining light of the moon, the high waves of the sea glittered like the waters of the river Yamuna. Mistaking the sea for the Yamuna, the Lord ran swiftly and jumped into the water, unseen by the others. So he was already in transcendental ecstasy, lost in this lila, and then he was jumping in the sea, mistaking it for the river Yamuna. Falling in the sea, he lost consciousness and could not understand where he was. Sometimes he sank beneath the waves, and sometimes he floated above them. The waves carried him here and there like a piece of dry wood. Who can understand this dramatic performance by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? When I read this, I was just actually remembered a piece of dry grass in the street. <laughs> like a piece of dry wood, he is swimming. So like the wind is carrying the grass everywhere. He is actually carried by the water. So it's remembering at the Shikshashtakam. He himself is giving him to this scene. Keeping the Lord sometimes submerged and sometimes afloat the waves carried him toward the Konaraka temple.
And here's a little purport from Srila Prabhupada. Konaka, generally known as Arakatirtha, is a temple of Lord Surya, the sun god. It is situated on the seashore 19 miles north of Jagannath Puri. It was constructed of black stone in the beginning of the 13th century of the Shaka era and it shows expert craftsmanship and architecture. So we can see that the Lord actually is swimming towards a temple which is actually made for the Sun God. Radharani and the Sun God, there's something combined. So he's carried by the sea in this way to this temple. And now we hear further what happens. Lord Krishna performed pastimes with the gopis in the waters of the Yamuna. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fully merged in those pastimes. Meanwhile, all the devotees, headed by Swarup Damoda, lost sight of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Astonished, they began searching for him, asking, where has the Lord gone? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had run off at the speed of mind. No one could see him. Thus everyone was puzzled as to his whereabouts. Has the Lord gone to the temple of Jagannath or has he fallen down in madness in some garden? Perhaps he went to Gunticha temple or to Lake Narendra or to Jataka Parvata? Maybe he went to the temple of Konarka? Taking, uh, talking like this, the devotees wandered here and there looking for the Lord. Finally, they came to the shore, accompanied by many others. While they were searching for the Lord, the night ended. And thus they all decided, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has now disappeared. In separation from the Lord, everyone felt as though he had lost his very life. They concluded that there must have been some mishap. They could not think of anything else. A relative or intimate friend is always fearful of some injury to his beloved. So that shows they were all on the platform of spontaneous love, no Aishwarya. When they arrived at the seashore, they conferred among themselves. And they, they conferred among themselves. Then some of them saw uh, sought our Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Chattaka Parvata. Swarup Damoda proceeded east with others, looking for the Lord on the beach or in the water. Everyone was overwhelmed with moroseness and almost unconscious, but out of ecstatic love, they continued to wander here and there, searching for the Lord. A 
And actually this also shows Rati. All made for us with examples. Passing along the beach, they saw a fisherman approaching with his net over his shoulder, laughing, crying, dancing and singing. He kept repeating the holy name, Hari, Hari. Seeing the activities of the fishermen, everyone was astonished. Swarup Damoda Goswami therefore asked him for information. My dear fisherman, he said, why are you behaving like this? Have you seen someone hereabouts? What is the cause of your behavior? Please tell us. The fisherman replied, I have not seen a single person here. But while casting my net in the water, I captured a dead body. I lifted it with great care, thinking it a big fish. But as soon as I saw that it was a corpse, great fear arose in my mind. As I tried to release the net, I touched the body. And as soon as I touched it, a ghost entered my heart. I shivered in fear and shed tears. My voice faltered and all the hairs on my body stood up. I do not know whether it was the ghost of the dead Brahmana or an ordinary man. But as soon as one looks upon it, it enters his body. The body of this ghost is very long, five to seven cupids. Each of its arms and legs is as much as three cupids long. Its joints are all separated beneath the skin, which is completely slack. No one could see it and remain alive in his body. That ghost has taken the form of a corpse, but he keeps his eyes open. Sometimes he utters the sound gong, gong, and sometimes he remains unconscious. I have seen that goes directly and he is haunting me. But if I die, who will take care of my wife and children? The ghost is certainly very difficult to talk about, but I am going to find an exorcist and ask him if he can release me from it. <laughs> I wander alone at night killing fish in solitary places, but because I remember the hymn to Lord Nishingha, ghosts do not touch me. This ghost, however, overcomes me with redoubled strength when I chant the Nishringha mantra. When I even see the form of this ghost, great fear arises in my mind.
Do not go near there. I forbid you. If you go, that ghost will catch you all. Hearing this, Swarup Damodar could understand the full truth of the matter. He spoke sweetly to the fisherman. I am a famous exorcist, he said, and I know how to rid you of this ghost. He then chanted some mantras and placed his hand on the top of the fisherman's head. He slapped the fisherman three times and said, Now the ghost has gone away. Do not be afraid. By saying this, he pacified the fisherman. The fisherman was affected by ecstatic love, but he was also fearful. He had thus become doubly agitated. Now that his fear had subsided, however, he had become somewhat normal. Swarup Damura said to the fisherman, My dear sir, the person whom you are thinking a ghost is not actually a ghost, but the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because of ecstatic love, the Lord fell into the sea and you have caught him in your net and rescued him. Simply touching him has awakened your dormant love of Krishna. But because you thought him a ghost, you were very much afraid of him. Now that your fear has gone and your mind is peaceful, Please show me where he is. The fisherman replied, I have seen the Lord many times, but this is not he. This body is very deformed. Swarupdamura said, The Lord's body becomes transformed in his love for God. Sometimes the joints of his bones separate and his body becomes very elongated. Hearing this, the fisherman was very happy. He brought all devotees with him and showed them the body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord was lying on the ground, his body elongated and bleached white by the water. He was covered from head to foot with sand. The Lord's body was stretched and his skin was slack and hanging loose. To lift him and take him the long distance home would have been impossible. The devotees removed his wet undergarment and replaced it with a dry one. Then, laying the Lord on an outer cloth, they cleaned the sand from his body. They all performed Sankirtan, loudly chanting the holy name of Krishna into the Lord's ear. After some time, the sound of the holy name entered the ear of the Lord, who immediately got up, making a great noise. As soon as he got up, his bones assumed their proper places. With half external consciousness, the Lord looked here and there. 
The Lord remains in one of three different states of consciousness at all times. Internal, external and half external. When the Lord is deeply absorbed in internal consciousness, but he nevertheless exhibits some external consciousness, devotees call his condition Ardha Bhaya or half external consciousness. In this half external consciousness, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu talked like a madman. The devotees could distinctly hear him speaking to the sky. Seeing the river Yamuna, he said, I went to Brindavan. There I saw the son of Nanda Maharaj performing his sporting pastimes in the water. Lord Krishna was in the water of the Yamuna, in the company of the gopis, headed by Srimati Radharani. They were performing pastimes in a great sporting manner. I saw this pastime as I stood on the bank of the Yamuna in the company of the gopis. I saw this pastime as I stood on the bank of the Yamuna in the company of the gopis. Now, if we see in the translation word to word, Prabhupada actually was writing Gopi, but actually he has written Saki, Saki, Eka Saki and Saki Gane. Eka Saki is standing in Saki Gane, the company. So, Saki, as we know, Prabhupada describes in one verse of this Chaitanya Chart Amrita, and he's actually describing what is a Saki. A Saki is actually serving that Radharani and Krishna are meeting together. He describes this very, uh, very clear. And he's coming up to Manjari Bar. So that's why when we read this, it's hidden. Because it's also made for some who may be in Gopi Bhav, so they will understand in another manner. But he has written Eka Saki and Saki Gane. One Gopi was showing some other Gopi the pastimes of Rata and Krishna in the water. In this way, in our understanding, this means one Manjari was showing another Manjari what is going on there between Rata and Krishna in the water, because it said here the pastimes of Rata and Krishna in the water. The gopis are also there, but actually this gopi is showing the pastimes of Rata and Krishna in the water. So we can understand actually that here he is in the position of a manjari and watching the scene. All the gopis entrusted their silken garments and ornaments to the care of their friends and then put on fine white cloth. What are you remembered now on? All the gopis entrusted their silken garments and ornaments to the care of their friends and then put on fine white cloth. We heard that before, isn't it? Radakund, water sports, uh, what when we were discussing the Radakunda water sports just recently, some weeks ago, we were listening and hearing also that the gopis of the, the mandris are standing outside and keeping the white thin cloths, putting them on the sakis on the elder gopis 
and then they are taking baths, but the mandaris are standing outside ready for further services. Remember that, or? I remember that. And uh, yesterday we also read that <clears throat> the manjaris are in the kunj. So then we can ask, how is this possible? One time we hear they are not in the kunj, and then we hear they are in the kunj. That to understand. Prata Kunda, they are not in the kunj. They're not taking part of this erotic pastimes, what are happened there. But the Sakis are in, in the water. Manjari is not in the water. But these days we heard they're doing their seva in the kunj. So how to understand this? The Radha Kund, water games, <coughs> there is not only Radha and Krishna, but also Sakis are there, playing together. And Manjaris are outside. Because these are not this intimate pastimes when Radha and Krishna are in union. So, Manjari is staying outside. Don't take part of this erotic games. Not playing with Krishna. They are looking for their service from outside. But in that moment, when this youthful couple is together, intimate, in the kunja, then there are no more sakis. Then the manjaris are there and doing their seva. This is the meaning behind this. So we understand they are in the kunj, doing seva, when the couple is in very intimate situation, in union. There are no more sakis. Not possible. Just to understand this is, I think, very important. To understand our own role in the past times. What we have to do and what we not have to do. This has to be clear to every one of us. We never enjoy with Krishna or take part of these games. We are always serving our Swamini day and night, but we know exactly what is our position at which situation, which moment. So this is very interesting to understand. This sometimes different meanings, but it's it's always right. So to understand it right here in Chaitanya Chart Amrita, we have to see how actually Prabhupada is using the words and we have to use it in the same way to understand. When he's saying Sakis, he also includes Mandaris actually. Otherwise he's speaking about Gopis. Yeah, yeah. Right, Gauravani. This is the this is the point. Sometimes in the books they use uh, the 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 names Manjari, Gopi or Saki and we cannot understand exactly what is meaning but if we uh, watch what they are doing, their behave and the service they are doing, then we can understand what was this meaning of Saki, Gopi and Manjari. Sometimes they use Saki and mean Manjari, then we have to check what they are doing. What is the service? 
in which mood they are doing this service. Yes. And then we understand easily exactly what is the uh, person behind this, what is the mood behind this. And if we hear the games now, which are actually now taking place, there is described also what Krishna is doing, doing with the gopis. So we can understand every gopi is what? An aspect of Radharani. Radharani is actually the whole, the sumnum bonum of all the gopis. So whatever Krishna is doing with the gopis, actually he's doing with Radharani. Because in his mind, he is only with Radharani. So we may see the scene and see it in a different perspective, like someone would if he has Gopi Bhav. But we don't have to be disturbed to hear about this, because we are just watching it out of another perspective, which actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself is doing here now. Otherwise, if it wouldn't be like that, like I said, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could watch the scene? He is actually our teacher, isn't it? So we have to understand what was his perspective and go into that yeah. perspective. Mm. So one Saki is showing the other Saki. What here means one mandri is showing the other mandri. My dear friends, just see Lord Krishna's sporting pastimes in the water. Krishna's restless palms resemble lotus flowers. He is just like a jeev of mad elephants. And the gopis who accompany him are like she-elephants. And who is the main she-elephant? We understand. The sporting pastimes in the water began, and everyone started splashing water back and forth. In the tumultuous showers of water, no one could be certain which party was winning and which was losing. This sporting water fight increased unlimitedly. Actually, we know who will win. And actually, the white cloth, white color, is actually resembling our Swamini's position in such games. She will be always on the winning side, because she is Jai Shri. Jai Shri is resembled by white color also. She is always victorious. Her love is always victorious. So actually, you wear also white clothes. You are wearing the victory, the victory of Radharani. <laughs> Spotless white. Jai Shri Radhe. So now it looks like no one could see who is winning or who will lose. This sporting water fight increased unlimitedly. The gopis were like steady streaks of lightning, and Krishna resembled a blackish cloud. And in this description we can also understand who is the steady lightning strike, the golden steady lightning strike. <laughs> 
And here it's more than one. The lightning began sprinkling water upon the cloud. And now we can see the same description like the water sports, nearly the same like the water sports in Radakun. And the cloud upon the lightning, like thirsty Chataka birds, the eyes of the gopis, joyously drank the nectarian water from the cloud. As the fight began, they splashed water on one another. Then they fought hand to hand, then face to face, then chest to chest, teeth to teeth, and finally nail to nail. And this actually is also a description just between Radharani and Krishna. And we will see further what Krishna is doing with the gopis in between. Thousands of hands splashed water and the gopis saw Krishna with thousands of eyes. With thousands of legs they came near him and kissed him with thousands of faces. <coughs> thousands of bodies embraced him. The gopis heard his joking words with thousands of ears. So what does this mean for Radharani actually? She is expanding like Krishna in thousands of gopis. Krishna is expanding in thousands of his forms and Radharani is expanding in thousands of forms. And what do they feel? They feel everything of each of these thousands of forms. And that's why this description is so wonderful. Because Radharani is enjoying now, together with Krishna, in thousands of forms, actually. With thousands of legs they came near him and kissed him without, with thousands of faces, thousands of bodies embraced him. And the gopis heard his choking words with thousands of ears. Krishna forcibly swept Radharani away and took her into water up to her neck. Then he released her where the water was very deep. She grasped Krishna's neck, however, and floated on the water like a lotus flower plucked by the trunk of an elephant. So here we can understand <laughs> Krishna is taking her in deep water because then she, have, she will have fear and she will grab the neck of him, hold herself. And because it's the Yamuna, it's floating, she's just floating and holding the neck of Krishna. What a wonderful picture. And they are floating actually in their exchange of love. Krishna's neck, however, ah, yeah, sorry. Krishna expanded himself into as many forms as there were gopis and then took away all the garments that covered them. The water of the river Yamuna was crystal clear and Krishna saw the glittering bodies of the gopis in great happiness. 
The lotus stems were friends of the gopis and therefore helped them by offering them lotus leaves. The lotuses pushed their large round leaves over the surface on the water with their hands, the waves of the Yamuna, to cover the gopis' bodies. Some gopis undid their hair and kept it in front of them as tresses to cover the lower portions of their bodies and used their hands as bodices to cover their breasts. Then Krishna quarreled with Radharani and all the gopis hid themselves in a cluster of white lotus flowers. They submerged their bodies up to their necks in the water. Only their faces floated above the surface and the face were indistinguishable from the lotuses. In the absence of the other gopis, Lord Krishna behaved with Srimati Radharani as freely as he desired. So we can see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in the position of a mandri because he is saying here when the gopis were absent, Lord Krishna behaved with Sri Mata Radharani as freely as he desired. Only Manjari can see that. So that shows in which position Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is right now. When the gopis began searching for Krishna, Sri Mati Radharani, being of very fine intelligence, and thus knowing the situation of her friends, immediately mingled in their midst. And this is showing the mercy of Radharani, isn't it? That's her great mercy. Many white lotus flowers were floating in the water, and as many bluish lotus flowers came nearby. Now it's a very poetic description, actually. As they came close together, the white and blue lotuses collided and began fighting with one another. The gopis on the bank of the Yamuna watched with great amusement. When the raised breasts of the gopis, which resembled the globe-like bodies of Chakravaka birds, emerged from the water in separate couples, the bluish lotuses of Krishna's hands rose to cover them. The hands of the gopis, which resembled red lotus flowers, arose from the water in pairs to obstruct the bluish flowers. The blue lotuses tried to blunder the white chakravaka birds, and the red lotuses tried to protect them. Thus, there was a fight between the two. I find it very interesting that Radharani is first going to the gopis, mingle with them, and then this is starting, actually. 
So Krishna is trying with his hands to get these Chakravaka birds. But the red lotuses try to protect the hands of the gopis. <laughs> so it's a fight. And actually what Krishna is searching for, we know. Blue and red lotus flowers are unconscious objects. Now comes the explanation of this reverse uh, poetic expression. Blue and red lotus flowers are unconscious objects, whereas chakravakas are conscious and alive. Nevertheless, in ecstatic love, the blue lotuses began to taste the chakravakas. This is a reversal of their natural behavior. But in Lord Krishna's kingdom, such reversals are a principle of his pastimes. The blue lotuses are friends of the sun god. And though they all live together, the blue lotuses blunder the chakravakas. The red lotuses, however, blossom at night and are therefore strangers or enemies to the chakravakas. Yet, in Krishna's pastimes, the red lotuses, which are the hands of the gopis, protect their chakravaka breasts. This is a metaphor of contradiction. So, you said one hour. This hour is over, so... We can go on next time there, in the middle of the Lila. So thank you very much for listening and sharing. Just a moment, Gauravani. Just a minute. Yes. Say when just say when we can uh, when we should stop. So we are now at the text ninety nine. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued in his pastimes. Krishna displayed the two ornaments of hyperbole and reverse analogy. Tasting them brought gladness to my mind and fully satisfied my ears and eyes. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tasted them and it brought gladness to his mind and fully satisfied his ears and eyes. He was tasting it from the view of a mandri. After performing such wonderful pastimes, Lord Sri Krishna got up on the shore of the Yamuna River, taking with him all his beloved gopis. Then the gopis on the river bank rendered service by massaging Krishna and the other gopis with scented oil and smearing paste of amalaki food on their bodies. And here again, Prabhupada is using 
the word or is translating Sakigan. And here's explained that actually these gopis were rendering service by massaging Krishna and the other gopis. So the Sakis were actually rendering the service to the gopis. And this is actually how we can understand the description here of Prabhupada. When he's writing Sakis, it's going in the direction they are serving Radharani and Krishna, that they come together and it goes up to Kinkaris. Then they all bathed again, and after putting on dry clothing, they went to a small jeweled house where the gopi Brinda arranged to dress them in forest clothing by decorating them with fragrant flowers, green leaves and all kinds of other ornaments. In Vrindavan, the trees and creepers are wonderful because throughout the entire year they produce all kinds of fruits and flowers. The gopis and maidservants in the bowers of Vrindavan pick these fruits and flowers and bring them before Radha and Krishna. The gopis peeled all the fruits and placed them together on large plates on a platform in the jeweled cottage. They arranged the fruit in orderly rows for eating and in front of it they made a place to sit. Among the fruits were many varieties of coconut, mango, bananas, berries, check fruits, dates, tangerines, oranges, blackberries, santaras, grapes, almonds, and all kind of dried fruit. There were chantaloupes, kshirikas, palm fruits, keshuras, water fruits, lotus fruits, bell, pilu, pomegranate, and many others. Some of them are variously known in different places, but in Brindavan they are always available in so many thousands of varieties that no one can fully describe them. So it's wonderful how the description here is a Brindavan. And you are there in Brindavan right now. You can just go to a tree and ask and they will give you all these fruits and you can offer them. You are right there. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is describing everything very nicely in detail. And this shows his deep absorption and his love, actually. At home, Srimati Radharani had made various types of sweet meats from milk and sugar, such as Gangajal, Amrita Keli, 
Piyushakranti, Karpura Keli, Sara Puri Amriti, Padmachini and Kanda, Kshirishara Vriksha. Does anyone know what this is actually? <laughs> She had then brought them all for Krishna. So, so many different kinds of sweets. When Krishna saw the very nice arrangement at food, he happily sat down and had a forest picnic. Then, after Srimati Radharani and her gopi friends partook of the remnants, Radha and Krishna lay down together in the jeweled house. So again, another hint. Who can take part in that? Only Mandri or Kinkari. Some of the gopis fanned Radha and Krishna, others massaged their feet. And again it said gopi. But here in the word for word translation we hear Sakhi gone. And it's transla translated all the gopis. And as we know already when Prabhupada is using the word Sakhi, what he means. When Radha and Krishna, ah, oh, sorry, some of the gopis fanned Radha and Krishna, others massaged their feet, and some fed them better leaves to chew. When Radha and Krishna fell asleep, all the other gopis also lay down. When I saw this, my mind was very happy. Suddenly, all of you created a great tumult and picked me up and brought me back here. Where now is the river Yamuna? Where is Vrindavan? Where are Krishna and the gopis? You have broken my happy dream. Speaking in this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fully returned to external consciousness, seeing Swarup Dhammada Goswami, the Lord questioned him. Why have you brought me here? he asked. Then Svarodamura answered him, You mistook the sea for the Yamuna river, he said, and you jumped into it. You have been carried this far by the waves of the sea. This fisherman caught you in his net and rescued you from the water. Because of your touch, he is now mad with ecstatic love for Krishna. Touched by ecstatic love for Krishna, he is now mad with ecstatic love for Krishna. <laughs> Throughout the night, we all walked about in search of you. After hearing from this fisherman, we came here and found you. While apparently unconscious, you witnessed the pastimes in Vrindavan. But when we saw you unconscious, we suffered great agony in our minds. When we chanted the holy name of Krishna, however, you came 
to semi-consciousness, and we have all been hearing you speak like a madman. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, In my dream I went to Brindavan, where I saw Lord Krishna perform the Rasa dance with all the gopis. After sporting in the water, Krishna enjoyed a picnic. I can understand that after seeing this, I must certainly have talked like a madman. So, could you, as your feeling, could you define among this 18th, 18th chapter, which verse is Manjari, you know, is Manjari? Could you, you know, uh, could you say this verse, this verse, this verse? Then other devotees may, you know, more understand it clearly. Okay. Actually, we, we just went through it, and uh, actually, I, I said always. Yeah. So, actually, the whole situation was watched by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that mood. Otherwise, mm -hmm. how he could be um, in this situation that he can see when the gopis are gone, he can see how Krishna freely enjoyed with Radharani, for example. Yeah, it's very clear that this is Manjari bath and other occasions. I think I made it quite clear. I hope so. Yeah. But I, I, I don't remember now all the Okay. places but we went through that yeah at least i i may say text 100 text 100 100 of course you know if they are seeing so mahokabu seeing all the situation then more bus but at least very clear is 100 And also, hundred eight is, is yes. I mean, he has mentioned that they are massaging Krishna and other gopis, scented oil and smearing paste of Amalek, and you know, it's a very personal service. And then they are going to bed. So, of course, we know that. Not everyone can be there if this is happening. So also I feel I this is not really clear, but one one hundred seventeen. Uh, this is maybe you know maybe another interpretation possible, but uh, if we see so in this case the seer maybe I mean, 108 is also very clear. Yeah, 108 is clear. 100 is maybe clear. And uh, 117. So many of these verses is so clear, actually. And even in, in, in the water sports, we can see that actually the gopis are somewhere else when Radharani and Krishna, when Krishna take her, put her in the deep water, and actually, Radharani is taking the neck of him. The gopis were somewhere else, sporting. They were with the flowers, with the white lotus flowers. And then Radharani actually went there, and then Krishna also went there. And then this fight between the lotuses began. 
So actually, I can see that the whole scene, actually, like I said, if you see it from Manjuri Bhav, actually, it's it's ongoing. Yeah, maybe that's true. For the scenes, maybe Manjuri Bhav. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was completely absorbed. How he otherwise could see when they are lying on the bed, they get massage, they fall in sleep, and the other Manjuris also fall in sleep. How he could see this scene if it wouldn't be in Manjuri Bar? So it's very clear, actually. But, Chainana Maharaj, you. you we, we cannot help people who don't want to enter into that deeply in meditation. We cannot take it, we cannot do it for them, actually. I, we can just give some hints and uh, they have to do it themselves to dive in. And But I see your soft heart. You really want to help them and give them some hold and some some further hints but we have to dive all ourselves inside and this is actually why we are having this sharings here to dive together and to go in these feelings and to share share these feelings to give hints to others actually but I think Yeah, this true. She may not even understand that. Mm. Yeah, that, that's actually true. This is Yamuna's water, water pastime. This is only this is seeing the Manjari's perspective there. This is it. So actually, the whole Chaitanya Charit Amrita is just made to bring us to this ecstatic state of Manjari Bath. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself is showing us the way. First, he is Nimai Pandit. He defeats everyone. Everyone in the whole world was defeated by him in knowledge. What he's doing then? He's just dropping the knowledge, dropping it. And then he starts to chant in ecstasy and he's showing us the way to feelings. And if we see his whole story, his life story, he's just giving us one hint after another to go into that bath, to come there, how to come there. He's showing us because he went himself this way, playing the role of a Vaishnava, of a devotee. And in the end, he's showing us how ecstatic it is. And he's jumping in his ecstasy in the sea because he's mistaking it for the Yamuna. And then he's completely in this Leela. And in this way, he's sharing with us through his devotees who explain what happened there. So the whole Chaitanya Charit Amrita is made for that, to transport this to us, actually. But we have to go deep together. And I'm very happy that we are doing this together. Mm. Like I said, you know, this 82 bus. I saw this past time as I stood on the bank of the Yamuna in the company of other Sakis. One Saki was showing some other Saki the pastime of Dada and Krishna in the world. This is also, you know, standard, you know, stood on the bank of Yamuna. 
So this scene, this also, you know, like obviously, like Manjar is doing. Then all all other pastime also they are watching. It seems. Yes, it's obvious if we understand that Prabhupada is actually using here word word for word translation. He's using the terms ekasaki and sakigan. He's not saying gopis, but it's translated into gopis actually. Yeah. But he's saying saki. And as we read before in Chaitanya Chart Amrita, mm. actually this was Gurudev wanted to have this translation and I, I sent him this. There was a very clear statement of Prabhupada what a Saki is and what she has to do. What are the duties of a Saki? And there we can understand when Prabhupada is using the word Saki, it's going up to Kinkari. It starts from a gopi who wants to serve Radharani, who is more on the side of Radharani because she understands that there's more savur to serve Radharani to meet Krishna than to meet Krishna herself. And there it starts and it goes up to Kinkari. And by the seva, we can understand in which position this person is. Mm. And this description is given by Prabhupada. We don't have to speculate. Everything is, they are very clear. And this is the nice thing, actually. We got the whole thing. We just have to take the time, go deep, understand. And then it's, it's very, very clear, actually. This 83 also very interesting. All the gopis entrust their silk garments and ornament to the care of their friends and then put on fine white clothes. Lord Krishna taking his beloved gopi, beloved Saki with him, bathes, perform very nice pastime in the water with the Yamuna. And this is also reminding us to another pastime. Yeah. So actually everything is on one thread mm. and it's just a question from which uh, perspective mm. we look on it. And this is actually so amazing that mm. in different kind of baths you can read Chaitanya Chart Amrita and you may understand it in completely different manners. Mm. And this shows how expert Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and all the other Vaishnavas or great souls are who are actually translating or giving some hints like Prabhupada and Anandadas Babaji who's giving us the clear picture. It shows how expert they are actually and I'm always again and again struck by wonder how they can do this. For me, it's just impossible to imagine to do such things, actually. Normal people cannot do such things. And also, probably, in the nature of Sanskrit, so we can interpret it both ways. Like uh, maybe last time we, I said a little bit, you know, even Radhana Sasdanidi in Brindava two versions. 
é, Lada Badaba Sampradaya Zibajan é Lada Sudanibi Sampradaya mas sem, almoço sem e de interpretar o Saki Baba mas Lada Rasa Sudanibi from Prabhupada Saraswati especially Ananda Zibajan Maharaj interpretar o Kukri Manjari Baba so Really amazing, but same, you know, same Sanskrit, but the interpretation is completely different. I was, I was surprised before I was reading Bhagavatam and the Prabhupada translation and, uh, you know, and Kriyanand uh, Maharaj translation is completely different. Then I check it out. Why it is happening? <laughs> Some, you know, uh, is wrong, but both correct. I check it out with my you know, small knowledge. Then I found that both is correct. Because we can interpret it both ways. Like, uh, you know, in Sanskrit, sorry, like Sandhi there. So if try to separate, you know, try to broken Sandhi, Sand is kind of, you know, one word, one word and connecting. So, the, so if we want to separate this sandy, then at that time we can interpret the both way. So this is very, you know, subtle thing. And uh, this Prabhupada also is very expert. Like, uh, it seems, uh, it depends on us, depends on leader. If you want to, you, if you have a Manjari style Baba, you can interpret this way. If, if you want to say Saki Baba or Gopi Baba, you can interpret this way. Like, a, you know, we are feeling like this. And uh, when we did from beginning, we could not understand anything. Then we are thinking, oh, this is Gopi, this is Gopi, all Gopi. We could not discriminate which one is Saki, which one is, you know, like Manjari, and uh, which one is uh, Bishama Sneha, Sama Sneha, Radha Rik Sneha. We, could, we have no idea before. But now, slowly, slowly, we, are, we have some clear understanding by the nation of the day. So, if in that pers perspective, if we, we did, together, then we can find more things. This also, I, I found out some, I forgot the bus, the Kunja Devi, no, Kunja, uh, Kunja Dashi. One, one, this, in this text, I, I forgot, but then say Kunja Dashi means completely that Kunja Dashi means uh, manjari and uh, also some discretion of Devi. Maybe Devi means maybe Saki. So today, <coughs> by your mercy. I could do, I could do more understanding more more deeply more about it. Actually, it's not my mercy. It's the mercy of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. It's the mercy of Prabhupada. It's the mercy of our Guru Dev. This is the mercy. Actually, I'm just trying to touch one drop of this nectar ocean and that get cleaned by that actually get cleaned and this was actually in the beginning in the beginning said this is the way we should go touching one drop of this nectar and the heart get cleaned actually and then we don't have to actually make up on our way on the base of the mind we can make the way on the base of our heart and this means just looking at it 
from the perspective of your heart. And if your heart is the heart of a kinkery, then you look at all things from the perspective of a kinkery, whatever you read. And you will find in all texts actually, yes, this is Mandri Bhav. Mm. Where is not Mandri Bhav? Everywhere is it. We can find it. Mm. If the heart <coughs> is cleaned by these drops and by the mercy of this association with all of you and the mercy of Gurudev, of course. Yes. So this is 102 verses. And say, Brinda bane devi gana, kunja dashi yata jane, para padi ani ania sakara. The Prabhupada say, the gopi and the maid servants in the bower of Brindava pick these fruits and flowers and grow to them before Radha and Krishna. This is called Kunja Dasi. This Kunja, Kunja may be, you know, Dasi and also Saki also. There. Hmm? Ah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this Kunja, Kunja the Dasi, and it seems, you know, this baby. Baby Gana. Baby Gana means, you know, baby, maybe Saki also there, maybe this one. Bigger one also. And uh, you know, Manjari also together, mm -hmm. you know, maybe some reading, Saki, and uh, well, I don't know. They, they order, they ask, maybe we can go and. Uh, yes, I think the point is. Gurudev made this point very clear. When your stai bhav is there, you will find it everywhere. Mm -hmm. In some verses, it's more obvious, in some less. Yes, true. But this but the whole scene is very clear, actually. Mm, very clear. Yes. And this is uh, Mahaprabhu say, I am seeing, Mahaprabhu saying, like say 80 bars, text to this. Seeing the river Yamuna, he said. So this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu become like a seer, mm -hmm. not a doer. So it's also interesting. He's taken away by the ecstasy, the ecstatic feelings of a mandri. Mm -hmm. So go oh. on, oh, so sorry, if you also you want to say. No, no, just go on. So, so next to, next to, Subject, what do you want to talk? Actually, I don't know now. I didn't know that we will be finished today I with this chapter. So, I don't know. If you have some idea, I mean, also, if somebody likes, he can also make, you know, just one time or two times or whatever, we can share also the positions and uh, somebody can share and read some texts. I'm not the only one who can read English and also my English is not so good. So please come in. 
Mega. We are reading a little bit today. Gora, Gora Sundara. And reading a uh, 20 chapter of Anjalira. Mm. Maybe 20 also very good. Yes. Anjalira 20, yeah. Uh, that's also good. But I don't know. This is, this is 90, 19th verse. I don't know some Manjari Baba is hidden or not. This I'm not sure. But uh, the inconceivable behavior of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Well, let's see. Next time. We may see if there's something inside or not. Mm. Because, you know, because maybe if we see something there, because uh, today I, I was sharing Anantas Baba said in Chaitanya Mahapodira, in Puri, Jagannatha Puri, especially Gambira Lira. So at that time, Mahaprabhu was exhibiting Madana Kya Mahababa. So Generally speaking, Madanata, Madanake Mahababa is Radharani has. But Manjari also may have, because their one is Radharani. Manjari can take part in all these feelings, so. So, 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 I don't know. We have to read very, you know, very, how to say, very, uh, if we did some of the like, behavior of Mahaprabhu, we may also, we may feel, um, oh, this is, I don't know, you know, this is, might be, you know, something may happen. Anandasrava generally say 14th chapter and 18th chapter. But that uh, might be so another chapter also, some hint also may be possible. Or, you know, you mentioned that every, every bus, if we may say someone who has Thai Baba, we may, you know, see in that vision. So therefore, maybe 19th chapter also, we did not read, you know, so, so deeply. Maybe we may read 19th, 20th, you know, also maybe good. Yeah, let's see. You have a lot of time and you're in Vrindavan. You can read. Unfortunately, I have to do so many other things here, so I don't have so much time to always before go inside. So usually I just go inside in this moment when I read it. So, but if you can go before and read this and uh, more meditate on that, then maybe you'll find much more because from my side it's just you know i'm looking from the surface trying to get deeper yeah we also we did not to the end of like a prepare usually but just to you know due to your association as a devoted association sometimes we feel more So like I said, if somebody is inspired, you know, to take over some parts, I, I, I would really like it, you know, so have an exchange and uh, I don't want to stick on this position, you know, because actually I have no quality for that, so. No, you have quality because of Gorabani. I may have some... <coughs> some mercy with me, but I don't know if I can really crap it and use it, you know, in to full extent. I want to do it, and maybe you can help me to do it, but I don't feel that I can really do it like it would be possible. So let us share in love and help each other and, you know, 
I just love to be a part of all this and just be a speck of dust at your lotus feet and get the mercy. That's all I want.